What is seller financing and how does it work? Welcome to part two of our two-part series where we walk through how does seller financing work both for the buyer and the seller and why you should always be looking for seller financing opportunities. Hey there, my name is Mike Fritz. I'm the founder of Titanium Capital Investments and the multifamily CEO system. My greatest passion is helping people just like you create financial freedom with multifamily real estate. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the five different types of seller financing so that you can think through which ones work best for you. And stick around to the end because I have an invitation so you can learn a lot more about seller financing so you can do these deals over and over again. Let's get started. The very first type of seller financing is what's called an all-inclusive mortgage or sometimes called an all-inclusive trust deed or an AITD. This is where the seller carries the entire balance of the mortgage, of course, less any down payment that has taken place. So this is a really typical deal in seller financing. The seller will finance the majority of the rest of the deal less your down payment. So if a property costs 500,000 and you put down 100,000, they're gonna finance that $400,000. That's why it's called an all-inclusive mortgage. They're gonna pick up the rest of the slack after your down payment. So if you have to put 5% down or 10 or 20 or 30, whatever the negotiation is in the seller financing, this helps you because they're going to take on the majority of the rest so that you don't have to go to a bank and get another mortgage on the rest that the seller won't carry. The second type of seller financing is called a junior mortgage or often known as a seller second. We use this a lot in multifamily. And in fact, a lot of multifamily real estate investors don't even know this exists. And quite frankly, I'll be honest, I didn't know this exists until it hit me right in the face in a deal I was doing. What I learned was this changes everything, this type of loan. Because for example, I was looking at a huge apartment building. It was 133 units. The seller wanted about $7 million for the project. So we would have had to come up within the two to $3 million range to really get the deal done. Well, that's a lot of capital to raise. We were looking at our investors and we were gonna go start raising capital. And then a seller second opportunity came in. The real estate agent called me up and said, would you be interested in a seller second? I had no idea what he was talking about. I didn't know if it was legal or not. And so I'm like, what are we actually talking about? What's the seller second? And it's where the seller actually finances part of the down payment. So you still go to a bank to get the mortgage, but the down payment, which often is tough to come up with, the seller can finance the down payment. So the bank is still only giving you 70 to 80% of the loan, just like they would in any type of loan. So the power of a seller second is it brings the seller into the transaction, but they don't have to take on the entirety of the loan like an all-inclusive mortgage. This changes everything for bigger deals. You wanna get into bigger deals? Then this is a great way to go. Now, understand there's a couple reasons why some people won't do this. Number one, if they're in a syndication where they've raised a lot of money to buy this property and they're selling it, they usually won't do a seller second because they have too many investors to pay back and they wanna just exit from the deal, take their cash and replace their investors' money. So often if they're in the middle of a syndication, they're not gonna do a seller second. Another caveat to the junior mortgage is that a bank will often want you to have just as much skin in the game as a seller second. So for example, if the bank asks you to put 25% down, they want you to have at least 12.5% into the deal. They don't want somebody else carrying more money than you are because they want you to have enough skin in the game to make this property work. So while a junior mortgage is awesome, a seller second such a great opportunity, especially for bigger commercial buildings, understand there's a couple things you need to know in navigating them. Some sellers don't want to do seller seconds, they just want to sell it off. But some projects that are in great distress and not stabilized, a seller second gives a seller the ability to get top dollar for their property, even though the property isn't stabilized yet. The third type of seller financing is what's called a land contract. In a land contract, the title isn't actually transferred to the buyer until it's sold. So a land contract is you do have a contract for the land, but you don't have title for the land. The title is still held by the seller or the bank, whoever's holding the majority of that loan. And in an owner financing deal, it's usually the seller. So the seller still has title and will transfer title to you once the property is paid for. But the buyer is given 
equitable title, which is simply temporarily shared ownership. It's simply where you share ownership in the title so it reflects that there's a contract in place that you actually own the property, you are the owner, but somebody else is on the title. So it still gives you equitable title so if there was ever a lawsuit in play, they would know that you did put money down and it's a way to protect your investment of your down payment and the rest of your fees. So in a land contract, after you've made all the payments or paid it off at the end of a balloon payment, you're going to get title, but it's only after the property has been paid for. For example, if you make payments for five years and then you do a refinance, then the title goes to the bank and it's the same thing as a normal house. You have title on a property, but it's held by the bank until the last payment is made. You don't get title until it's paid for. And this is the same thing in a land contract. The owner holds title till that last payment is made. Before I go on to the last two types of seller financing, make sure you subscribe to our channel and join our family of real estate investors that are seeking to create financial freedom. Also, make sure you hit that bell notification. That helps so much in our busy lives when new videos are dropped to just remind us to come back and take up that content. The fourth type of seller financing is a lease option. In this scenario, the seller leases the property to the buyer for a certain period of time in the expectation that they're moving towards a sale of the property. If the seller agrees to this, usually they accept a down payment for the lease to buy option to hold the fact that they are going to buy and then they make smaller payments so they're not paying as big of payments and it gets them into the property. So in a lease option, the buyer is usually in the house or they're renting the house out. They bought it as an investment, but they don't quite own the property. There's not a contract in place that says they own the property. So a lease option is you're leasing it with the option to buy. So by leasing it, if you do buy, what happens is they back up to those payments and they place that towards payments on the actual property. The fifth type of seller financing is an assumable mortgage. Assumable mortgage allows the buyer to take the seller's place on their mortgage. Now, some banks won't allow this and some banks will, but assumable mortgages are powerful ways to get properties. Because if somebody's in trouble and they have a mortgage, you can slide in, take over that mortgage, and you can have a property with not a lot of money into the deal. Assumable mortgages are actually powerful. Sometimes they're called subject twos. Some FHA loans and VA loans and even some ARM and traditional loans are assumable mortgages, meaning banks will allow them to be assumed by other buyers. But you must check with each bank because each bank has a little bit different stipulations on if they're going to let this happen or not. But one thing you need to know about seller financing is you can actually get into seller financing deals with zero money. Some sellers are willing to sell their properties to you for no money down. You know how I know this? One year ago, this month, I closed on a 23 unit deal that was seller financing. It was a really good deal at the time, he did seller financing, no money down. Now, why in the world would he do that? He did that because the property needed so much repair that I was going to have to put a ton of money into the property to really make it healthy. And he knew if he charged me a down payment and that I was going to have to really beat him up on price. So he said, I'll take away the down payment, but I want you to do the repairs in a certain period of time. That's a smart thing to do. Now, why would he have said that? Because if I do the repairs in a short period of time, now I have skin in the game. If I don't have any skin in the game, it's easy to walk away from that deal if it doesn't work. But by making sure I put those repairs in place, I have some skin in the game. But you can get into real estate zero money down. This is what's so powerful about this. All these different options that exist for different seller financing deals are really dictated by the seller. The seller decides which one they're willing to do because some of them have better benefits and they're a little bit harder on sellers. So the seller will dictate which one works for this type of property. Another one, especially in sumable mortgages, the bank will dictate if that's a project you can actually take on. Every single deal is just a little different. But that's why I've created something called Seller Financing Secrets. It's a course that I put together that really helps people just like you figure all this out. For example, how do you fish sellers in a sea of people selling their property? How do you fish the ones to the surface that really would be willing to do seller financing? Well, I talk about that in my course, Seller Financing Secrets. If you go into the description and you go to sellerfinancingsecrets.com, I have a page there that explains the course, what I teach, and why you should be thinking about this course as the next addition to your library. Thank you again for tuning in. Make sure you click that link and I'll see you in the training.